Hi guys, this is Andrew with Headphones.com. Welcome to The Headphone Show, and today we're going to take a look at the brand new Sennheiser HD 560S. Now, this is a dynamic driver over-ear open-back headphone that comes in right at around $200. It's been making a lot of waves in a lot of communities because anytime Sennheiser releases a new headphone, it's really exciting. Let's take a look. Now this headphone was particularly challenging for me to get a hold of. As it turns out, there's a lot of demand for it, and so it was sold out in many places that I would normally go looking for it. And so this was actually sent to me, this unit was sent to me uh, by DMS. He's another you know, audio headphone content creator, uh, and he has done a review of this as well, and so I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. You guys can check that out. But big thank you to DMS for sending this over for a review. For this review, I'm gonna go over the usual aspects of it, but it's gonna be a little bit different as well because there have been some reviews and impressions of this headphone, the 560S, that have come out that have said that this is the greatest thing ever. And then there are other communities that have evaluated this headphone and they say it's really not that good. And so part of this review for me has been trying to figure out maybe the best way to navigate some of this. But we will get to that because I really do think that there is an explanation for why some people have heard it one way and other people have heard it another way. Um, in the meantime, let's talk about the build design and comfort. The build here is, yeah, nothing all that special. This is the usual standard fare for Sennheiser. It's a black version of their HD5 series, which is different from the HD6 series because the HD5 series has this uh, back piece for the yoke instead of the double-sided yoke structure that exists on the HD6 series. Personally, I much prefer the look of the HD6 series. I prefer the double-sided yoke uh, that they have there. And the HD6 series to me also just feels more sturdy than this. This feels a little bit more like, you know, rickety plastic. They are made all made out of plastic as well. Just the fact that it feels like uh, rickety plastic is not an indicator of poor build and that it won't last long because these have a long history of being, well, not indestructible, but lasting a long time. And so I would expect this to last a long time as well. For comfort, I do find these reasonably comfortable because they are only 240 grams. That's the other advantage of using plastic materials. And with this one, there is a little bit of uh, you know extension here in the arm, so it's not too difficult to get it to fit right. But unfortunately, there is also quite a bit of clamp force. Now, that's not really that big a deal. And you know the HD 6XX and the 660S and all of that series, they've all had you know quite a bit of clamp force there as well. And you know it does it does loosen over time. So I'm not I'm not worried about that all that much. And you know when you do wear this for a long time, it does have that ability to kind of just disappear on your head, uh, just like the you know the rest of the series in that line. And thankfully, the pads here are huge. They have a nice, massive oval opening that, uh, well, it's easy to fit your ear into. And I don't have any issues with my ear touching the fabric on the inside or anything like that. For how it looks when I wear it, let me just show you guys here. Right, so looks like pretty much every other HD 5 series headphone, not the 6 ones, uh, but it's black instead of that, you know, kind of beige brown kind of thing that goes on the 598 and stuff like that. Now before we talk about the technical performance, there's one other thing I want to mention, and it's that the cable for this headphone, <laughs> it's not the greatest. Um, it is a single entry cable, single sided entry here. The cable is terminated in a quarter inch plug and you can use uh, the adapter to use 3.5 millimeter uh, devices. Okay, let's talk about how this sounds. It is worth remembering that this comes in at basically the same price or very similar price to the Sennheiser HD6 XX, which is of course the legendary HD650. Now I know in Europe the prices for the HD650 are less than what they are in North America, but in North America for the longest time the Sennheiser HD6 XX has been kind of like the best value benchmark out there for headphones, especially with you know higher end amplifiers and stuff like that. They scale really well and so you know when this one comes in at a very similar price in North America it's a little bit odd because you know you could get this or you could get an HD6 XX and the question really is it does the HD560S now kind of dethrone or unseat that, you know, performance to value king that the Sennheiser HD6 XX has been for so long. The first thing I want to mention is actually drivability, and that's an important subject, I think, because the 560S is a 120 ohm headphone. Now, that puts it in a little bit of an awkward spot as far as drivability is concerned, because while on the one hand, you don't really need much power for this, on the other hand, it's still recommended to use an amplifier of some kind. 
So for technical performance, what the HD 560S does really well at the $200 price mark is detail retrieval, speed, and surprisingly, soundstage. And this is where the 560S is considerably better than the HD 6 series. Now, it's not super laterally you know, spacious like a Sennheiser HD 800 or anything like that, um, but the big problem with the soundstage of the HD 6XX is that you get sort of the three blob effect. And that means that you kind of don't really get front left and front right all that well defined. And with the 560S, it's a much more even distribution of the soundstage. And importantly, it's also got better forward presence as well. So the center image isn't as tight and intimate on the 560S as it is on the HD 6XX. Some people might actually like that, but for me, I have found that with the with that HD 6 series, it almost felt like that was a bit of a limitation on its overall like quote unquote resolution because you know, where you would expect to hear certain things, there was just a gap there. And with the 560S, that's not the case. So this is a big win for the 560S as far as soundstage goes. Um, now, as far as punch and slam, none of them really did it that great. Again, it has a sort of natural decay from a dynamic driver going on, but um, this, these were never particularly impactful headphones, like the kind of stuff you might get from, you know, Fostex or Focal or anything like that. Obviously, those are more expensive, but at the same time, that's not that's not really what these are about. These are more about detail and speed and all that stuff. And importantly, you know, what many call timbre for the HD6 XX as well. The one other thing I want to mention for technical performance is that for instrument separation and image distinction and all that stuff, the HD6 XX still does better than the HD 560S. And that might sound a little bit surprising considering the much better soundstage on the 560S, but at the same time, it's more so that, you know, the images themselves are a little bit more de well-defined in spite of the fact that they're on a tighter and more, you know, closed-in kind of soundstage on the older headphone. For anybody who's looking at that series and going, ah, I wish it had better soundstage, well, now it does with the HD 560S, and I think that's a really good thing, even if, you know, maybe the crazy detail scaling isn't quite as good. Now, let's talk about the frequency response and tonal balance of the HD 560S. And I've posted uh, some measurements there in the headphone community forum, if you guys want to check that out. This was all done on the Gross 43 AG standardized measurement rig, and I've also done a written review where you can dive into the measurements a little bit more, see the channel matching and all that stuff. But the one thing I want to mention when I was doing my evaluation of this on the test rig is that there was quite a bit of positional variance depending on how significant the clamp force was. And this is also why I think some people had a very positive impression of this and other people may have had a not so positive impression of it. So let's get into that. But let's start with the base. And the base for the HD 560S, in my opinion, is a substantial improvement over that of any of these uh, open back Sennheiser headphones that are you know, in the HD 6 series. It doesn't have the base bloom that exists with the HD 6XX and 650 but it's still really well extended here and better extended than on the HD 600. So this has probably the best base extension out of all of them. It's a little bit contoured there, so it does boost just a tiny little bit, uh, but it's really in a satisfying way and it follows the target really, really well, in, in my opinion. You know, maybe it's not quite as elevated as the Harman base shelf, but for an open back dynamic driver headphone, um, this is fantastic in the base. Um, and then when you move up into the mids, it's also really, really good. It's almost a perfectly well-matched uh, frequency response to the target, and it elevates at an appropriate spot at around 900 hertz as well. So, you know, where the ear amplifies certain frequencies for what the brain expects to hear, the 560S also elevates right around that spot. So it's doing all the right things for frequency response there, and importantly, it's keeping the tonal balance there between fundamental and resonant harmonic intact. You know, maybe something doesn't perfectly match the target here, and we can nitpick that, and that's fine, but overall, uh, you know, the, the balance between fundamental and, and harmonic is is right where it needs to be. Now, when we go into the upper mids and lower treble, that's where some of the problems start to show up. And this in particular is where there was quite a bit of variance depending on the positioning and depending on the clamp. So the amount of pressure that was being applied to the headphone when on the rig, and that would mean that it would actually be closer or further away from uh, the microphone there. And similarly, if you had a wider head, you, there would be more clamping pressure. And if you had a more narrow head, there would be less. Now, unfortunately for me, the measurement that I'm showing you guys here is the closest to how I end up hearing it with a fairly noticeable emphasis right at around, you know, starts around four and a half K and goes all the way up to, you know, almost six K. And that to me does 
cause a little bit of an issue there. It's a little bit of an aggressiveness, a little bit of an uh, analytic edge. And the other issue is that right at around 8K, so that's where your consonant tones are, your S's and F's and T's, your SH sounds, that's also a little bit of a peak. Now, it's not about how it deviates from the target here, it's more about the shape of the elevation. And it's good that there is an elevation, it's just that it's not as smooth as something like on the HD6XX. So while this measurement here was the most consistent one that I got, and it was also the one that lines up most closely with how I hear it, there were also some other ones that were a little bit more agreeable looking here in the lower treble that weren't quite as aggressive. And so I think this does actually do some work to explain why opinions have been a little bit divided on this headphone. If the coupling to the side of the head is such that it smooths out some of that treble response, then you're gonna have a better experience with it. Now, once again, this is nitpicking because that's really the only issue with this headphone. Um, this, this is, the rest of the frequency response is fantastic here. And you know, in the upper treble, everything looks exactly where it should be. And you know, it has the 9K dip that should be there. And if anybody wants to learn more about that, that's essentially where the concha interaction is. I know I've seen some people scrutinizing that 9K dip on this headphone. Uh, rest assured that is supposed to be there. And if it's not there, then that's a problem. And I will leave a link in the description where you can learn more about that as well. On just about every headphone that's a good headphone, you'll see a 9K dip or somewhere around 9K, you'll see a dip there. And the HD 560S has it. Uh, and then, you know, for the rest of the treble, it's, you know, re reasonably well extended. I would have maybe preferred a little more air up there because I do find that the Harman target rolls off a little in the treble to be a little bit more on the safe side of things. But this, for the most part, is better than most headphones will ever measure. I mean, if you're looking at this measurement and going, oh, there's a few places where it deviates, let me emphatically state that this measures better than like 90% of headphones, even at much higher price tags. So, you know, relative to this target, at least, which is, you know, the Harman combined target, uh, you know, this is fantastic. It's just that in the lower treble and in the mid treble, there is a little bit of an aggressiveness or an analytic edge to it. So once again, compared to the HD6XX, the HD560S has a better bass response. It's got a similar, similarly excellent mid to upper mid uh, balance. And then it's just a little bit uh, less smooth in the treble, at least for my ear. But again, depending on the coupling, it may be totally fine for you. And really what that means compared to the HD6XX is that while it might not unseat that one for the best detail and the best scaling, this does certain things notably better than the HD6XX. And it's also just a slightly different presentation for the overall tonal balance to it. And it's one that I think many people will prefer over the HD6XX. Now, I do want to give a couple other comparisons. The Harmonic Dyne Helios is a headphone that I've recently reviewed as well, and that also has a very spacious, a surprisingly spacious presentation, and it's also really fast sounding with good uh, punch and slam. The main difference between that one and the 560S, and they do come in at a similar price, is that the Harmonic Dyne Helios is a much more V-shaped kind of sound with a bass emphasis and treble emphasis with a little bit of a withdrawn uh, mid-range there, uh, while the HD 560S is considerably more linear and more, let's say, classically reference tuned. Uh, the other headphone I want to compare this to is the Hi-Fi Man Sundara, which, yeah, I mean, the Sundara, in my opinion, is the straightforward upgrade over the HD 6XX, barring, of course, some of the crazy scaling that you get with different amplifiers like the ones behind me. But the Sundara, I think, is also a straightforward upgrade over the HD 560S. At least the Sundara that I have here. I know there are some older Sundaras out there that maybe didn't sound quite as good, but uh, that is something that I'll have to confirm at another time. Uh, <laughs> for the moment, the one that I have here is definitely a better sounding headphone than the 560S in just about every way, uh, as far as instrument separation, detail, soundstage, dynamics, all of it. Soundstage is actually pretty close, I think. That's probably where they're about on par. And it is a more expensive headphone. I just think it is also worth the price increase over the 560S. So in conclusion, do I recommend the HD 560S? This is a reference class headphone with a reference kind of tuning that comes in at a similar price to, you know, what many people consider the existing value king. And while I don't think the 560S completely dethrones it in that regard, it certainly gives you a presentation that is a little bit more, let's say, technically correct. If you wanted to match this target in particular, I do think the 560S does get a little closer for the overall balance because it doesn't have the uh, upper bass to mid-range bloom that the HD6XX has. So if you don't see yourself getting into higher-end amplifiers or tube amps or any, any of this kind of stuff, and you just want, you know, the best bang for the buck, uh, you know, performance, you're gonna, you're gonna get yourself either an HD6XX 
or a 560S and you're going to get a topping L30, for example, or a Magni Heresy. Um, you know, there's not that much difference there as far as technical performance, apart from the soundstage benefits that you get from the 560S. At that point, I think it really comes down to whether or not you want the bass extension and the linear sound from the 560S, or you want the slightly smoother treble presentation of the HD6XX. And in my opinion, that is a difficult choice. So it does encroach on that value proposition that the HD6XX has had dominance over for years. So yes, I do recommend this headphone. Just make sure that you know the differences between this one and the HD6XX and some of these other ones that are out there uh, around this price. Make sure you know what kind of sound you prefer. Uh, but you know, for the most part, this is a fantastic sounding headphone. And I think anybody who's looking for a reference type of tuning, this will give it to you, right? So if you're if you're doing professional work or anything like that and you need a reference type of sound, uh, this is definitely one to check out. Anyways, that does it for this review. Thanks for taking the time to watch it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.